When Ishiura was dumped on the clay by top division debutant Ichi Yamamoto, there was no hint of the July fireworks to come. In fact, he took an age to get going. Caught under the armpit by Tsurugisho, as he often is. Then failing to unsettle Chiyonokuni with the Mainomi style cat's paws. Taking shot after shot on the run. Before this cuff to the neck had him spinning to an eighth straight loss against this foe. But on day four, versus a man against whom he'd ended his five match losing streak in May, his fortunes began to change. A game plan based entirely on left side attack, including a parry, belt grip and leg pull, took his head to head with Chiyomaru to 10-9. And the same principles were then deployed on Dai Amami, with spectacular effect. The behemoth, taken on a carousel ride, abruptly halted with a throw over the knee. On day six, after one full start apiece, he took Shaw Horzan's botched neck throw as his cue to attack with a left grip from behind. And on day seven, he darted further to the left to avoid a smash up with Giant Kaisei, but almost risked disqualification with that awkward grip. Day 8, as you may know, showcased his masterclass in how to play Uda. The gymnast's slow rising Tachiai punished with thrusts before the left arm again worked its magic, pinning Uda in place until the right hook could land in a manner which hardly suggested this was Ishiura's first win over the man. I may have lost the first few bouts, but Yokozuna Hakuho told me it's a long 15 days and there's plenty of time to gradually raise your condition, he revealed. This leg pull attempt may have proved too ambitious, but doubled as the key to unlock Kagayaki's upper defense. Both arms going in, the right setting things up for the left. And for a man of his well-toned figure, out-muscling Tochinoshin must be among his greatest sources of pride, taking him to seven straight wins for the first time since his elite level debut nearly five years ago. I got a good frontal grip on him from which to build my signature attack, he explained. But an attempt to hit low against Tedutsuyoshi misfired when his left foot slid too far leaving the salt spreader directly on top and well poised to throw. And his hopes of a career best score took a further dent from sparkling Tamawashi, who first blocked the left arm, then clamped it before coming inside with his own left. Just half a rung off the foot of the division, Ishiura was relieved to reach his winning score here making greater use of the right to sneak that left past the defences, creating his preferred angle, then throwing forwards when the reversal over the knee failed. That's a throw I learned from Yokozuna Hakuho, he said of his sneaky swipe of Shimano Umi's right knee. It's only a small gesture, I suppose, but I think I've repaid the Yokozuna in some way. Were he to post double figures, he would equal the score which earned him the Fighting Spirit prize on his first division debut. But although his left made its way to Chiyoshoma's belt, the Mongol simply reached over, spread his legs, and launched a trademark defensive throw. There were thus no prizes on offer in the finale against Akua, who literally ran to ringside after finding he was 30 seconds late. And the energy expended perhaps cost him dear, as Ishiura battered him from the left 
before ending with a clothesline. This was a thoroughly deserved and entertaining 9-6, and we wait to see if his aggressive left-side tactics work on higher-ranked foes.